Welcome, everyone. Thank you for uh, coming back. I seem a little slow today. It's, well, because I am. The topic for today is going to be composites, obviously a very intriguing topic. Um, and whenever I do composite demonstrations, overviews, I like to keep it simple, much with my philosophy of life. So I'm just going to draw a plate with a hole in it. Right, uh, plate. Uh, I don't really care how big my hole is. 20, 2022 version has this nice auto imprint, so you can skip skip a skip a couple steps. Um, it'll do the auto imprint, and then I just had to go in, delete that little circle. Okie dokie. So, <clears throat> plate with a hole in it. Pretty classic composite example. Let's go ahead and mesh this. I'm not going to be super particular about what the mesh looks like all that much, except I do want a little bit of fidelity so we can make some fun, fun, uh, uh, fun, 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 fun composite shapes. Okay, so this blue is just brutal. All right, so composites. Uh, you will, if you've heard anything about Altair and composites, you've probably heard this idea or, uh, yeah, this idea that our composite workflow is actually a little different than how you would do this in, say, Abacus or um, Nashtran. And we like to correlate this almost a one-to-one -one for manufacturing. And uh, there are certain you know, positives of this. Some people say there's negatives, but I mean, at the end of the day, it's just, it, it is what it is. So we'll, we'll kind of talk about this. Uh, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to work in this model ribbon. There's a composites button. Um, it's very unassuming, right? Because composites are such a complicated topic that it's all in a, a button. But really, it's all going to happen in this browser. And, you know, I, I might not agree with how this is done, but I think that this is a really good starting place. And then we'll put in some fancy buttons for making plies and all this type of stuff. So in the composites browser over here on the, the left-hand side, I'm going to make it a little bigger since this is really where we're going to be doing most of our work. Um, the right-click option for creation of plies, shapes, properties, materials, um, and even starting to integrate what we would call, say, like a composite toolbox. So something like uh, first ply failure methods, you can put some composite, uh, some plate loads on these parts. Um, these are things that we, you know, we acquired Isacomp a few years back, and now they're starting to get kind of rolled into this. So there is some more composite-specific type of analysis uh, within here. Um, probably not something we'll get to in, in our intro class. And, and do keep in mind, this is probably, uh, you know, class one of maybe three, maybe four, maybe more. You know, we could have a whole 20-part you know, series on composites. Uh, the last, the first thing that you should always kind of do, and people usually forget, and it's not uh, not mandatory that you do it first, is you should probably go and look at a your element normals, so you know which direction you're stacking this ply up in, uh, or also uh, the material reference orientation, right? Because when for an isotropic material, it doesn't matter if this element um, over here in the the screen, you know, if if this element is located up, down, left, right you know, sideways, doesn't particularly matter. But when I put a composite on this, it does matter which way is zero. It does matter which way is positive 45, negative 45. So um, in order to do that, we should probably go and check our material reference orientation. Got a fun little tool here. Click on the yellow box to grab all the elements. Green check. Pick the color that you'd like, et cetera. We're probably going to review it first. So we'll look at we'll look at our review. So um, left and right, probably not the biggest deal. Obviously, the clocking for plus and minus 45 would be an issue here. But really, the issue are these elements that are going, you know, if I was to put a zero degree ply on this element, it's going, you know, north, south instead of east, west, which its neighbor is. Um, so essentially, the idea here is, well, why don't you, you know, do something better and orient these? OK, well, I can. Uh, and I have different options for orienting these, whether it be by a system axis or a system ID or actually a line. I can can do a curve as well. Um, so I'm just going to come and pick a line. Uh, this happens to have geometry, so that's kind of nice. And I will hit apply. And now I just selected that one line. It was going, you know, in the positive x direction, um, and all of my arrows are now pointed that way. Okay. 
The line is great, especially if you have fiber steering. So if your line is not necessarily straight, um, you know, it could be wavy or squiggly like that. Okay. So always kind of step one. Again, it doesn't have to be step one. You can make your whole plies. And then when you run it and you realize, like, why is there some weird stuff going on? You're going to be like, ah, that's what I missed. Okay. So come back and, and uh, do that. Okay. So I've, I've, I've checked that. We're good. Uh, solver agnostic, that's kind of a nice tool. The way that this goes, I'm going to encourage you to make a, a shape if you'd like. It's not really necessary, but um, I'm going to make a shape, you know. And the idea behind a shape is that um, we're just going to be able to, to uh, essentially have this one-to-one -one map of, well, what does the shape of your ply look like? You know, if it's a full laminate, it's going to be all of the elements. If I create another shape, that's just going to be like a whole washer, right? Um, so I can come and fill this with elements. Uh, keep in mind, we can do elements by edge okay, by holding Alt. So Alt will be by face or by edge if you're close to an edge. Just kind of keep your, your preview on. Uh, so this could be a washer. I'm also going to actually go select adjacent as well. So I want two, two layers. And this will be my washer. So I'll hit the green check mark. And essentially all that we're doing is these, and I'll make one more just for, uh, this will kind of be a, a half ply. Let's just start from here to here. Uh, this is the very manual way to do this. So in the subsequent episodes, if we ever do those, I keep saying we're going to, uh, I'm going to do another half ply, but this time it'll be north-south. Um, we can actually read in a lot of this data from FiberSim, from Katia, so um, you don't actually have to go and make all of these plies. Okay, So I have these shapes, right? Shapes makes pretty much sense. Uh, now we need to go and say, well, these these we're going to make a ply. It's going to have a shape, but that ply has things like thickness and, and orientation, etc. So we're going to make it go and make a ply. We'll say this is uh, my full sheet, zero. Probably want to be better with your naming because who knows what this means at the end. Um, and then I'm just really filling out a form, right? So, uh, you know, plies are really thin. Blaze, what unit system are you in? I have no idea. Uh, put in your thickness, uh, put in your orientation. So once again, this is why orientation was important. Zero degrees, now we know is zero degrees in the positive X direction, uh, et cetera, et cetera. You can put a material on here. I don't have one yet, but I'll kind of do that bulk assignment later. Uh, and then essentially all that it really needs is a shape, right? I mean, the kind of the least common denominator needs a thickness, an orientation, and a shape. Okay. Uh, so I can come and pick for my shape. Oops, pick my shape. This happens to be my full ply. Hit OK, et cetera, et cetera. Let me just make a couple more here. This is where you speed up the video. It goes, like, uh, let's do washer. A zero uh, thickness. Maybe this is a different material. So now it's double. Instead of double O one, it's O one. Uh, zero set. Dip up, up, up. A whole washer. Okay. okay. You can kind of see there's a little preview going on over here, right? You can keep going. Uh, there's a duplicate option, so you can duplicate. You know, if I wanted uh, this, I can actually make this three or four more times. Okay, duplicate this. Um, and so that may be another little trick is, so all of this got duplicated, all this information is duplicated, but now say I want a 45, a 90, and I'm just changing this in the table, negative 45. It's a little easier to just kind of do some of this bulk instead of, that's just not as much mouse movement, right? So I can do the same thing here. Really probably only needed three of these, but duplicate. Um, so that was zero degree, and we'll come down here. So this is 45. Uh, you know, I'm assuming that everyone's using the same, same mostly composites. Okay, and this has nothing to do with how they're stacked. You see that they're coordinated, they're collected in this unstacked ply. So really, if you want to put this with the manufacturing process, all that this is doing, this is your hopefully your automated cutter is just going and cutting plies of a certain shape, of a certain uh, thickness that probably is a little more correlated to what material it is, right? Um, uh, etc. Right. So these are actually the plies. So if you know that at the end of the day, you have a hundred plies to stack up, you should have a hundred plies here. 
right? Um, even if they're the, the identical, if you're doing a, the same 100 plies over and over again, they have to actually physically exist in order to actually put them in. Okay. All right. Uh, last little uh, thing. I need to make a ply. I just want to get one of all of my shapes in here. So uh, my half ply zero. I uh, probably should have named these, but what? whatever. You know, 0 0.005. I'll just do something a different thickness, different shape. I feel like we're really, we're really getting this process down, right? So half ply, right click, duplicate this. Give me just two more for now. Okay. Once again, these are all just existing. I'm stacking them up over to my right or my left, depending on where you are. Uh, that, that'll be fine. That's plenty of shapes. Okay. So I have these 12 unstacked plies. And I have that option to duplicate there. There's also another option. Uh, so right now, I have an idea of all these plies. They're spread out in the workshop. Hopefully, they're not getting too dirty. But now we need to stack them into a laminate, right? So for all of my composite folks, you understand that this is a very reasonable thing to ask. Uh, so I'm going to right-click Create a Laminate. And this laminate is going to contain plies. It's going to contain my stack up for the plies, okay? which just happens to be all of these unstacked plies. I'm just going to do a little shift click, just smaller, and drag them into my laminate. Okay, so now you see I have no unstacked plies, right? That's probably a good thing. If you have plies like laying around and you've already stacked everything up that you think, uh, you might want to double check what's going on. Okay? So these are this is actually the order in which they're stacked as well. So um, you know you can just kind of drag and drop if you'd like to change the order here. I'm just kind of moving these around. Uh, probably want a full sheet on the top and bottom. That usually is how deposits go. Where's another full sheet? Uh, sure. Oops. Move you down here. Okay. So, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, wonderful. So now your your question is like, well, yes, made a laminate. I want to see it. Show it to me. Okay. Uh, I believe I mentioned a while, a while ago, is that we do all of our visualization based on property. Okay. So in Nastran, these would be P comp or PCOMP G cards, uh, Abacus, they're like what, star composite or something, or composite, I don't know. Uh, but in OptiStruct, we have a, a kind of a particular property that is for this, what we call ply-based modeling, right? So I don't really care where the drop-offs are, where these different thicknesses are. It's just, these are the plies, this is the laminate, this is how they get stacked, figure it out. Okay. Uh, so that property, like I said, is a PCOMP P property. So I right click, make a property. Uh, there's some options in here for offset that I can show you. You know, if you want a, a flat OML or IML, you can uh, build from either one of those. But this property just really needs to exist and it needs to be assigned to the elements, right? Um, so under model, uh, again, kind of one of the ways here is under this property icon at the top uh, left under setup, there's this little down arrow. Like, yeah, I'm gonna slap some property on you. Pick the property. You can either pick the components or directly pick the elements themselves. I'm going to do elements. Hit play. Okay. I get this really nice, ugly brown colored property. It is perfectly fine. But really, what I'm interested in is this laminate. Okay. The viz state down at the bottom will be able to show you thicknesses. So down here, uh, this little 1D, you know, 1D beam bar type thing, there's a option to display plies as independent layers. So as I zoom in, I'll be able to say, see these plies. I can even color by plies. Uh, color by plies, I think. There we go. And I can also turn on the thickness of said plies as well. So if you would like to see how thick these are. Um, okay. So different plies. The, like I said, the uh, browser on the left-hand side is linked to the GUI, okay? So if I wanted to say, remove this ply, it's highlighted over here, I can just hit delete, and that ply will get removed from my stack up. I don't really, I'm not concerned where that ply existed in the zones. I don't really care where it went, right? So if I was to do that in a Nastran workflow, I would have to go and track this ply every time that it dropped a zone and I have to go and update that property. Okay. Um, so this is kind of a really nice ply-based workflow, um, uh, et cetera. 
uh, one last viz state if you are interested and you can also put on the by directions as well it's going to get a little messy so probably best to just kind of like review um, these plies right click review super great you can kind of see so that's our zero here's a minus 45 here's another zero so yeah etc cetera, etc cetera. um so you can kind of review the plies kind of see that the angles are 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 there i'm going to turn that off because that that does get a little busy okay. um and then last thing that i'd like to show is some of the drop offs let me just come in to these elements and go Hide. Oh, I guess we can see it here at this little corner where the, the plat plate and that kind of dis, dis, disintersect, if that's a word. Um, so you can actually see the, the drop off here, right? So I can see that this is the surface that I made, but um, here's the elements, their thickness, and all of these are, are live as well. So if this one actually changed to double you know, 01, it's a really thick plate, it'll show that. Uh, let me assign a material here, um, because the last thing that I do want to show is a little bit of the classical lamination theory. So you might be wondering, well, you know, I'm a composites guy. I only live on ABD matrices, uh, carbon or something. Once again, I will certainly screw this up. This is going to be a big number. Sure. This is going to be a probably slightly less big number. I want to do something a little more interesting. New. I always thought it was funny that new was 0.3 for composites and most metals, but oh well. Uh, and then this number is probably even a little slightly smaller than that. Okay, perfect. That's basically, I think, what I need to define a material. Uh, I'm just going to shift click and once again use the option to just fill out this information within the browser. So I'll give them all carbon. And the reason that I did this is I wanted to know the ABD matrices for this laminate, right? So um, I can right click on the laminate once it's been all stacked and it has all of the information that it needs, orientation, thickness, material, shape. I can right click and hit analyze. And this is going to pop up my uh, homogenized zone data, right? So at the end of the day, this is really what you're solving for. So if you wanted these, these out, you can copy and paste them. Um, our composites people are kind of nerdy, but I think that probably goes for most composites people. Uh, so they they even put in here, you know, kind of, the directions of the moments and forces um, and something else that I also like as well. Where is it? Oh, you can do plots of these as well if you'd like to see what the laminate rotation and things like that are. Uh, this is new to the 2022 version. Normally, oh, oh here, wait. They, uh, the composite guy used to do like what each of the ABD parts kind of meant. I always kind of like that, but I don't see it in here anymore. But you know, he'd show you where the coupling is between, you know, you know, extension and twist and, you know, bending and extension and those different types of things. But, oh, well. Okay. So different zones. Uh, their zones are in here. Okay. Number of layers. Different options here. Uh, oh, yeah. So some, you could put a stress limit on this. Okay. So that's the, the analysis feature just to kind of see what those ABD matrices are. And then kind of the last thing that I'll show, because I know not everyone is fully, you might be sold on this workflow. You're like, yeah, this is way better than what we're currently doing. No data duplication. I don't, you know, it, it makes sense. I'm stacking them up. I'm moving them around. I can see it in the GUI. Um, but I still run Nastra at the end of the day. And that's, you know, that's fine, I suppose, because Nastra doesn't have a PCOP P property, right? I don't think they do. Um, but what you really need are PCOP cards or something like that, okay? Uh, so we actually do have this idea of a kind of a, a, a two-in-one type of thing for um, viewing it in ply-based, but also viewing it in zone-based, right? So I can look at this laminate as the three zones that I have made, right? The full ply, the little half ply, and then around my washer where it gets a little thicker as well. Um, so I have these three zones, and, and I can almost treat these um as you know zone based as well it's a little better organization i think um if you want to do that but i encourage you to try to use the the option here um and then what i was essentially saying is we can um oh uh, 
right click and uh, realize is what I'm looking for this laminate into its actual zones, right? So when I right click on this laminate and realize it, this will um, create, instead of one P comp property, you'll have three P comp zones or three P, P comp G, I forget which one it makes. Uh, but we do have that ability to go back and forth. Um, a few other things that I'll just kind of note, we don't have to walk through completely. We do have a drape analysis in here for kinematic draping. If you do want to, so this goes over a doubly curved surface, we will do the alter, alteration to the angles as it goes over that surface as they spread and skew. Um, that's quite nice as well. Uh, and then there are some options in here that I didn't particularly show, but we can instance plies. So if you know, instead of the duplication that I did earlier, if you would like to instance apply, you can do a very uh, similar thing here where you can instance them. But obviously these pliers are going to be linked to kind of their uh you know their their master ply right the one that was created first so now anytime if i change you know this 005 it's going to change down here for 005 as well uh, so you can have a uh, an instance of a ply so instead of maybe duplicating you make one of each ply that you know that you could have and then you just instance them if you if you know they're all going to be the same Ugh. all right i'm really really hitting the limit as to what i can do uh, today. So I think that's going to be a good place to stop. This will really get you kind of started. Like I said, this is not what I would do if you already have CATIA composite data. Um, just a quick note, if you were to import uh, a CATIA part that has already been um, uh, composited, I guess, uh, when you import a CATIA file, you'll get these import options. You go down to entities, you can check on composites. By default, we don't have this on. But if there is any CATIA composite data, it should be stored in that cat part file. And this will bring in, um, I'll just show you what this brings in. This will bring in all of the data um, and the plies. So I think in this model, there's like 140 plies, which would be absolutely ridiculous if, you know, I don't, I wouldn't put it out of bounds of anyone. But, you know, if someone asked you to do 140 plies of what we just did, it would probably uh, kind of grind your gears a little bit. So all of that data is in here. Uh, this is a, a slightly different workflow, but, but no, no more complicated. With that, we're going to end our intro into composites um, and probably more to come on this. I'm about to add some more sessions to this whole thing. So um, perfect. With that, I'll stop recording and have a great day.